Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about pest control method that I learned from Foodscaping Utah and John Trimble. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. If you live in the state of Utah and have signed up for the USU Pest Advisories, you would know that it is time now to start spraying for the coddling moth, uh, for apples and pears. Now, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to spraying, so I wanted to find another method so that I could protect my apples from coddling moth. You know, the little holes you get in there in the worms. It's kind of gross. Well, John came up with the idea. I don't know where he got the idea, but I know there's other people who do it of using bags over your fruit. Now these are the probably pretty much the ones that John ordered. They're just an organza gift bag that I bought off Amazon. This is a five by seven and they have drawstrings that you just pull like that around your fruit and it protects it. So I'm going to try this on my apples and pears and see how it works. He says you're able to reuse them year after year so I'm really excited to try this. Now there were different sizes of bags. Um, this is a five by seven. I'm a little worried it might be too small because my Fuji apples get absolutely huge, but it'll be the perfect size for the pears. If it's too small for the apples and I can't get it off, I'll just have to cut them and buy bigger, uh, bigger bags next year. So let's get started. So right here, as you can see, we have one of my beautiful little pears. All you do is take the bag, Put it over that little pear and close it like that. Just pull it tight and there it's protected. Now I bought 200 bags, so I'm going to see how far these will go. Okay, now I wanted to show you what coddling moth damage looks like. Right here, we have a little hole that's been drilled into my pear. And that is, I think, where the coddling moth laid its egg and the, well, I don't know where they lay their eggs. I need to study up on the life cycle of coddling moths. But this is where the little larva has bur burrowed into my fruit. So I won't protect this one because this one has already been damaged. So we'll just keep finding ones that are undamaged and covering them. So I have almost finished. I have one bag left and I just wanted to show you a few more things about apple tree care. So let's go look at that. I used all 200 bags except for one that was defective and there's a few more left to bag but we'll just leave those. But I wanted to show you something about apple thinning. As you can see, I have a cluster of apples here. A little earlier this week, I went out and thinned all my apples, but I missed this one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the outside apples and leave this center apple. And you're going to ask, why waste beautiful apples? Well, the reason we thin apples is because, especially this tree, is a alternate bearer. What that means is last year I hardly had any fruit. This root year I have a ton of fruit. And if I do not thin this fruit, next year I will have no fruit. So to increase production next year, I need to thin my apples. So to do that, I'm going to go in. Now I should be using a pair of clippers because hopefully I won't break this whole thing off. But I just, uh, I'm going to break it that way. It's hard to do with one hand, but I just pinch it off. Hopefully I don't take the whole thing off. Well, I had to, I had to use two hands to do that. Now you can see that I have one apple left and I'm going to bag that apple. So now you can see that apple is bagged. So while you're in bagging and thinning your apples, this is a good time to look at apple trees and see how they function. So if you look at this branch, it's a very short branch that's terminating in an apple, and this is called a spur. The spurs are the part of the apple tree that actually bear fruit. Now, if you look at this branch, there is an apple at the end of it, but there's not very many spurs, and you don't see a lot of apples being produced on this branch. This is a younger branch, and it takes a few years to develop those spurs. 
this right here will most likely produce fruit next year because this is a young spur. Now another thing that you should be doing while you're thinning out your apples is going through your trees and looking for any pests or diseases. Now I didn't see too many problems with my apple trees this year, but one thing I always watch for is the uh, woolly apple aphid. And I usually see evidence of woolly apple aphid in this area of my tree, but I'm not seeing any this year. What you can do to prevent it is uh, do dormant oil sprays in the, you know, before the leaves open. Another thing you can do, what I do, is I squish them. And it seems like it takes one time of squishing in the season and then they don't come back. Now here's one other issue that I'm seeing. Right here, we have a little bit of powdery mildew. Now this isn't bad, but I'm gonna watch it, make sure it doesn't progress. Um, this might actually be something else. Um, I'll have to go look this up and make sure it's not like mites or something like that. But anyway, um, it, there's only one branch that I see that it's affected right now. But I can go and research that. I can ask my extension service. There's a lot of things I can do to see if this is going to be a problem and if I need to treat it. The other thing that it's almost time for is to look at my trees and see if they need to be summer pruned. Now, if you want to keep your fruit trees short, and I will link a video up at top that talks about keeping fruit trees small, you do need to summer prune. You could summer prune all of your fruit trees. I wouldn't do that to your ornamentals, just the, um, just the fruit trees. So I explained that a lot in the video that I have linked above. So go out, look at your apple trees, take some time to see if you can do some disease and pest control so that you can have a wonderful harvest this fall. If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments below. Like and subscribe, share this with your friends, and go have a wonderful garden adventure.